the Gilda's maximum lawyers community of legal entrepreneurs who are taking their businesses and lives to the next level. As a Guild member, you'll build relationships, be held accountable, and learn strategies specifically designed to get you unstuck and accelerate your plan for growth. Members are also granted exclusive access to masterminds hosted around the country. Our next event is coming up, and we're heading to Scottsdale, Arizona. There's something truly magical about the power of these in-person connections where real-time breakthroughs happen. Picture this. You're surrounded by like-minded law firm owners tackling your business and mindset challenges together. The energy is electric, the insights are transformative, and the results are game-changing. Investing in yourself is the best decision you'll ever make. The knowledge, strategies, and breakthroughs you'll gain are priceless assets that will supercharge your practice and propel you forward. Join the Guild and secure your ticket to Scottsdale at the best possible price by visiting maxlawevents.com. Run your law firm the right way. way. This is the Maximum Liar Podcast. Maximum Liar Podcast. Your hosts, Jim Hacking and Tyson Mutrix. Let's partner up and maximize your firm. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. I'm Jim Hacking. And I'm Tyson Mutrix. What's up, Jimmy? Oh, I just got back from a, a walk in the cold, so I'm sort of fired up. A walk in the cold sounds miserable right now, but uh, it's, been, it's actually pretty pretty decent today. It was decent yesterday. It's going to be 57 degrees. Yeah, it's That's like 40-something. It wasn't too bad. Not not like it had been. Yeah. No, it's like three days ago, it was like 14 degrees, so not too bad. So we were talking about 1980, or, uh, Wonder Woman 1984. We had a, a movie night last night. We had you know, family over, and we watched the movie. It was kind of fun. The movie is okay, in my opinion, but the, the kids liked it. We watched Soul the night before that, and it was fantastic. It's okay, probably so one of my favorite Pixar movies. Soul is on the docket tonight, so we're going to watch Soul for movie night tonight. And the the last last day before Daddy has to go back to work tomorrow. So Imani and I watched a crazy movie last night called Let Him Go with Kevin Costner and Diane Ladd. Woo! Is that good? Oh, we Yeah, it's tonight. real good. It's real good. We were screaming at the screen. We were like, holy crap. For it, or is it, you can actually rent it now? No, it was 20 bucks. God, because we, like a month, I don't know if it was a month ago, a few weeks ago, we were looking at that. We're like, oh my gosh, that looks so intense. So is it as good as the trailer? See, I didn't see the trailer. I tried not to watch trailers, so I had no idea what was coming other than the, the sort of the main storyline. And it was, Amani kept saying, this is sort of like Get Out. Like it was that, it wasn't that insane, but it was insane like there were weird people in the movie oh, that you were scared of yeah. yeah that's exciting wow so tell me something do you celebrate christmas like the like the gift giving part of it no i mean we trade we exchange gifts with my family but that's about it like we don't have a tree or anything i mean do the kids get gifts from my grandparents yeah or from their grandparents and i and we give them presents yeah do you have a holiday that you celebrate where mm-hmm. you all exchange gifts What's yeah that it's one? called it's called Eid. There's two of them, one at the end of Ramadan and one at the end of when other people go on Hajj. Is it as big as Christ, uh, the, the Christian holiday at Christmas? I think in Muslim countries it is. Here it isn't so much. I mean, mostly a lot of people still have to go to work. It's sometimes on a Tuesday. But you can celebrate it, and we make a big deal out of it. We exchange gifts and try to do fun stuff. Is there a similar thing to like a tree like we have, or is it different? No, not a tree. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're gonna, you want to talk about what your topic is for the day? So we're in our ongoing discussion about the mistakes we've seen in the four plus years we've been running Maximum Lawyer. And we are in the process of getting ready to launch our Max Law Minimum Time, Maximum Law Minimum Time uh, product course, uh, which will drop in January. And to that end, we've been recording some special episodes talking about the mistakes that we see law firm owners make. The course will be focusing on helping people um, identify what stage they're at and then to move from one stage to another if that's what they want to do. We're all about empowering law firm owners to build the practices that they want, to live the life that they want, to be deliberate and conscious about the decisions that they make so that you're not just running around chasing your tail all day. And so the mistake that I've noticed that I want to talk to people about is when it comes to content. And I think there are a lot of mistakes that people make when it comes to content. And the first one that I'll just throw out there 
is that people aren't creating enough content. I think that there's, there are these huge barriers that people have in their mind about creating content. And the biggest one to me is how they look or sound on video. It just freaks people out. Now I'm an old white guy and you know, I clearly don't care what I look like on camera. I've had videos with a scraggly beard. I've had videos with messed up hair. I've done videos on the side of the beach, but I, I have noticed that in particular, a lot of our female members get extra uptight or worried about their appearance on video. And I get it. I mean, we live in the society that places great value on beauty and appearance. And I get all that, but all of that thinking, whether you're male or female, all that thinking about what you look like and what you sound like, nobody cares. Nobody cares. They just want to know, can you answer my question? That's all that they care about. They don't care if you're wearing a suit. Somebody mentioned the other day in the big group, I'm thinking about making a video, but what about sounds from my kids in the background? I mean, I think that stuff just makes you lovable. And so to the extent that people can get past worrying about the sound of their voice, I have a very nasally voice. I also have a, a bit of a lisp and I have braces on. So I have lots of S sounds that sound funny. And when I got my braces, I was like, oh, I better take a year and a half off doing video. And I said, fuck that. I'm doing video and I'm going to learn how to talk on camera with braces. So um, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah. And all you have to really do is think about all the, the YouTube videos that you've watched over the last you know six months and think about all the mistakes people make in those YouTube videos, especially if, if you will do any of the DIY stuff around your house and you don't care about what the person sounds or looks like. You just want the answer. That's all you want. You don't care about all this other stuff, which is really, really interesting to me. So just think about like the, or, or as you're moving forward now, if you're worried about your appearance on video, as you're looking at YouTube videos, because most of us look at YouTube videos for answers on things and you're watching the video, you don't care. You do not care about the setting. You don't care about what the person's wearing. You probably can't even, I bet if you thought about the last, five freaking YouTube videos, you probably couldn't tell me one thing that that person was wearing because you don't give a shit. You give a shit about the answers. That's all you care about. So there's something else though. One, a mistake within those mistakes is people, especially early on when they have more time, they'll create the content, but then they'll stop, right? They'll have this, they'll, they'll, they'll think, Oh, I've got enough content. I'm getting up business. And then they'll, they'll just stop. Well, then guess what's going to happen? You may get some business for a little bit, but then it's going to plateau or it's going to start to decline. So being, you're going to have to create a system for creating content. And that's, that's what you've done, Jim, for sure. Blue Shark, I'm going to give uh, Blue Shark a plug here. They've got a built-in system for whenever they're doing people's websites, like for creating content. They, they do content interviews with their, with their attorneys that they do websites for. And so even if you're not very good at creating content, they're creating the content for you. They interview you. They ask you a bunch of questions about a bunch of topics. They give you those topics and then you record those, those, uh, they record you over the phone and that's, that's blog content for your website. So no matter how you do it, you've got to create some sort of system for, for creating your content. I'm glad you brought that up because that touches on the next mistake that I wanted to mention when it comes to content. But before we do, our old friend, Kent Richardson, came in on uh, Christmas Eve. He and my son, Ismail, and I set up my new video equipment. So I, I have a new dedicated studio. It's really, I'm really excited. So I can use my camera for shooting my videos. And I can also take that camera off and I can use it for my live shows and for my um, Zoom calls and things. So it's, it's really, really high def. And I shot my first five videos on it yesterday. And I was looking at it and I was like, holy shit, you can see one of my long eyebrow hairs sticking out way, like way, like an old man, way, like it's sort of distracting. Right. But just got to let it go. Just got to let it go. Let it, let it, I mean, the content's there. I'm not going to re-record it just for that. And to that end, you know, I'll, I'll misstate something in a video. I don't stop and edit it. I just keep going because I think that when it comes to content these days, especially with young people who've grown up on video, they're so cynical about slick, sickly produced video and just that, that they can smell salesy stuff as Dean Jackson would call it whiskers. They can smell that shit a mile away. So the, the more, or I should say the less polished you are, I was going to say the more unpolished you are, the better. And I think that's really true. So 
I, I want to get to your second point, but did you want to talk about that real quick? Yeah. Are you, are you talking about the, my topic or are you talking about more about the, the, no, no, I, I was just talking about, the reliance on super premium content, like it has to be slick and beautiful. And then I was going to, then I was going to segue into um, the point you made about having a system. Cause I want to talk about that too. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, cause I wanted you kind of sort of talk about your system a little bit. You don't have to go into, into, in too much detail, but I also want to um, say something about what you just talked about with your, your new studio setup and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be that. Okay. It, Jim, literally, I remember Jim having it in a closet and he just, this was Jesus nine years ago, eight years ago, where he was recording Mark Dover's computer popped it in. I mean, it was like a freaking quick process and mine's always been like a, against a wall or something like that. We, I remember at one point I had it in my basement at my house and it was this old, wet, dingy, moist basement, you know, like I had a green screen up, you know, cause it, it was in the basement, but you don't even have to have that. It can be something super, super simple. Now I'll just go into the conference room and throw up. I've got this little bitty tripod that I put my phone on, record myself. Boom. That's it. It's, it's pretty simple. So, but anyways, yeah, go, get into your system. So system. we're approaching 700 videos. We might be over. I don't know. I don't keep track anymore. It's sort of insane. And of course we did that one video at a time. And you're absolutely right that we've had, I've been in closets. I've been in garages. I've been in, I have used my phone with a little stand. I think that's the easiest. And I think that just like people say, Oh, I don't like my sound on camera, my voice, or I don't like my image on camera. They also say, Oh, I don't have the perfect setup. It's almost like having to get letterhead before you launch your law firm, right? It's like that perfectionism stuff and all that is just wasted energy and it's just excuses and it's just writer's block um, and rationalizations. You're telling yourself to not do that. So to your point though, you do need a system. You need to make it easy. If the more friction that there is in the creation of your content, the less likely it is that you're going to create said content. So as you know, Tyson, we issued a challenge this time last year to everybody in maximum lawyer. Now I think back then in maximum lawyer, we had about 2000 people. Now we have about 4,500 people. And of those 2000, about 80, I think signed up to try and do a video every single day for a year. And it looks like four people are going to make it. And I think that knowing and having watched those four people succeed this year, I know that they're not doing all the editing themselves at least I know three of the four, three of the four of us are not doing all of writing ourselves. So you have to have equipment. So that could be an O-ring light or, you know, a, a stand and your phone, and then you need someone else to edit it. If you're editing it, you're setting yourself up for getting frustrated on about January 6th and saying, Oh, I didn't get a video out today. So I'm done for the year. You know, and I'm not recommending people do this, but if it's, if it is, if you don't have the money to hire somebody, you could even do something where you upload it. There's, if you use Zapier, I'm pretty sure you can just set this up where you upload it to somewhere, whether that's Google drive or somewhere else, it could be YouTube. And then that could then shoot out to all, all your other channels you, without even editing it. If you just want to do these, you know, hot takes really quick on your video and just upload it, boom, it, it, through Zapier, it can just fire off to all these different, places. So destination. So even if you don't want to edit it, but you're right though, you should have a system built in though. You, you can hire VAs for so cheap through Upwork. You upload it to Google drive or wherever you, whatever platform you choose, Dropbox, whatever. And boom, they do the editing and they do everything else. All you have to do is record. I mean, that's, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, you, but again, if you don't want to do all that, you can just easily boom, upload it and, and fire it off. There's plenty of tools for that. I have one more mistake when it comes to content before we get to your topic, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So the last one is that people think they don't have anything valuable to say. They think that it's all been said before, or they think that they're repeating themselves. But of course, we're always trying to, as Robert Collier said, join the conversation that's going on in our prospect's mind. They're already having this conversation. They already have a question about something. And our job in creating content is trying to anticipate what are the concerns, the pain points, the questions, the issues that our prospects are having? And how could we create content that lets them know we're thinking about you, we understand you, we know what you're going through, and we know how to guide you through 
whatever dilemma it is that you're thinking about hiring an attorney for. And I just did a video this week. I did real basic videos. What is USCIS? What is a conditional green card? When can apply for citizenship? Now, some of these I've done before, and some of them are just very basic. I went on Quora because I needed some content. I needed to shoot some videos yesterday. I didn't have any ideas and I was sort of tired. I got those and I knocked them out. And so that's really the idea is that your voice is different than everybody else's. That, you know, if Michael Urbina, who's one of the four people that made it through the four, the, the whole year of doing videos, he and I are both immigration lawyers. There's, I guarantee you, there's no similarity between my videos and Michael's. Michael shoots them differently. He has a really nice editing style. Uh, I think a lot of them are in Spanish. He has a liter literally a different voice than I do. He has different cases that he's handled, different experience he's had at USCIS. So the stories that Michael tells are very different than the stories that I tell. And he's speaking to, frankly, a different clientele than I'm speaking to. So you you have an unlimited amount of content within you. Your job is just to be like a oil driller in Texas and to just find that vein, find the vein that lets you speak your word, tell your truth, tell your stories and everything else will follow. Yeah. I, and some of my videos are like, you know, what is a case management conference? What is a settlement conference? What's an opening statement? What's a closing argument? It's like things like that. It's, it, they're really, really simple. We do the same things for our podcast, which now I, I could probably just rip the audio off of. And now that we are recording a podcast for the firm, I, I now know that whenever I'm recording a video that could also be used for the podcast so I can talk a certain way, you know, cause you know how you do talk a little differently when, when you're on video, as opposed to when we're just talking like we are now. So um, just think about that too. You could you can multi-purpose your videos. The Guild is an insanely productive community of lawyer entrepreneurs with a growth mindset who share their collective genius and hold each other accountable to take their careers and businesses to the next level. But in 2021, we are upping the game. In addition to exclusive access to the group, FaceTime with the two of us, discounted pricing for live events, and front seat exposure to live recording and podcast and video, we are mapping out for members the exact growth playbook with our new program, Maximum Lawyer in Minimum Time. As a Guild member, you'll build relationships and experience content specifically designed to complement your plan for growth. For a limited time only, the Maximum Lawyer in Minimum Time program will be offered for free to all new Guild members. Join us by going to maxlawguild.com. All right, let's get into my topic. So mine is not as probably as exciting as yours, Jimbo, but it's a, it's likely more important. Uh, and that's training, right? And, and one of the biggest mistakes people do is not train their people properly. And it starts with onboarding. And what you want to do is you think, oh, I'm hiring this paralegal or I'm hiring this associate or I'm hiring this legal assistant. They've got experience. So they're going to know exactly what to do. As soon as they, they show up to work on day one, we're going to fill out the payroll paperwork and throw them right in. Or we're going to start, we're going to throw them right on the phones. And that is a gigantic mistake. And I, I was talking about this, we were talking about this in the guild, I don't know, a month or two ago. And like we our our training process is about two weeks. I mean, it is something that is, it has grown over time. It used to be a couple of days and the, the, our last hire that we hired uh, not too long ago, she, she trained for two weeks and she's a, a receptionist basically. And people are like, well, what, what do you, what do you train on so much for? We train on freaking everything. And what's interesting for us is that we train on, cause we have these pods, this pod system. So I make sure everyone you train on how to request medical records. What do you say specifically when you answer the phone? So even Tracy, whenever she, she's an associate, we onboarded her. She learned how to answer the phone properly because I want to know how I want to, I want to make sure everyone knows how to do all these different jobs in case you got to fill in or, and also, so you know what that person's dealing with, you know, how do you, how do you actually request medical records? How much of a pain in the ass is it to request and follow up on medical records? So that's the first part is onboarding is not onboarding people properly, just throwing them in the fire. And I'm sure a lot of you, as I'm saying this, you're like, you know what, you're right. Uh, I've made a lot of mistakes doing that because then they screw up everything They They don't know your systems. They may be a really, really good paralegal 
But if you don't train them on your stuff properly, they're going to wash out or you're going to get mad at them. You're going to fire them. You're going to get rid of them because you, you're going to blame them for your mistake. And that it, all of it comes down to, to training properly. Jimmy. So if you ever want a, a case study on how not to train people, you, you should go back in time to the hacking law practice about seven or eight years ago. It wasn't until Amani came on who is very detail oriented and who taught me the value of training that we really made that a priority in our firm. And I think that if you think about the E-Myth and all the things we talk about when it comes to the daring unit, that if you want a consistent result, you have to have a consistent way of doing things. Everybody has processes. Everybody has a system for doing things. Some people might have it all in the owner's head. Some people hopefully have it all written out on paper. And until you actually take that time to slow down and to get the precision on how you want things to be done until you get that down onto paper, everyone's just going to be winging it and you're going to get a bunch of widgets that all look a little bit off center that they're just a little bit off. Nothing's exactly right. It's going to, again, create more friction and slow you down. Yeah. And you, you and I've talked about this before where you, sometimes you'll have an employee. We don't anymore, but you know, sometimes you'll have an employee where one's one employee's doing something one way another employee is doing something a different way, like with what you were just kind of talking about. And it is extremely frustrating <laughs> because it's not consistent. And, and I'm not talking about the, you know, give, give someone a problem and let them solve it kind of thing. I'm not talking about that. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about like where it, it breaks your system whenever people are doing things differently. And, and maybe it's, maybe it's outlining a document a certain way. I don't know. I mean, maybe there's, it's a formatting of a letter. I mean, whatever it is, it needs to be consistent. And, and whenever you have, whenever you're not training people properly, they're doing things the wrong way. It breaks the system because then a, a, someone else down the line has to fix whatever that mistake is with the employee that's doing things a different way. But let me get to something else though, too. And, and it's the mistake. One of the mistakes is, is not having continuous training, right? So you onboard the person and then that person never gets another training for the rest of their career with your firm. And that's another huge mistake where you, you have to set aside time. It's just like, what's, what's one of the biggest, what, biggest questions I ask people, Jimmy, let's see if you, you get this right. Where, whenever they say they've got to do something, what do I ask them? Put it on your calendar. Exactly right. Is it on your calendar? And if you don't have regular trainings on your calendar, it's going to be haphazard. Maybe you'll do a training later on. Maybe you'll be like, oh, you know what? We need to train on this topic because we keep screwing this thing up. Or, hey, let's have a fun day and let's do some training. You know, like you'll do things like that. You need to have it on your calendar. We do it weekly. We, but you can, I mean, you can do it quarterly. You can do whatever you want. Just make sure you have a scheduled training where your, where your people are learning because we, we, every single week, the reason why we do it. So every single week is we learn so many new things every single week from our people. Hey, by the way, um, this in file vines not working because we, we have a feedback session too. So we'll start with, Hey, any questions or comments about anything? We'll get some feedback there and then we'll go into our training for the week. And we learned so much from that session. It's incredible. And so we're always improving. And I think Jim, haven't you started to do some sort of continual training? I don't know if it's weekly, but haven't you started to implement that? Not me, but Amani and Adele have, they have, they have attorney classes. They have paralegal classes on the leads team side. It was interesting. We just did an extra round of training. So like we taught everybody on the attorney side, how to handle leads under our new system and the software that was involved. But we just, Lar Clark said, I think we need to do another training before the beginning of the year, just so that we're all on the same page with how we're doing it. And I was surprised by the level of the questions because the extra training was clearly obviously needed when we did that. So, you know, I I've heard statistics that it takes someone hearing something seven times in order for it to sink in. And I think that's really true when it comes to working in a law office, especially one that says, you know, that are as busy and as growing as ours are, then that just exacerbates the need for greater training because you're always having to adapt to the conditions of the day. No, for sure. No, and I, I'm, I'm sure that seven times is probably nowadays, probably close to 20, just because we're getting hit with so much information. Um, and then I'm gonna get to my last uh, mistake people make. And, and that's because some people are like, oh, well, you know, how do we make sure all this gets done? And that's having a point person on this. So having one person responsible to get it all set up and 
That person doesn't have to do all the training. You don't have to do all the training. You can split up the training. We get, we split up our training amongst all our team members. So there are 52 weeks in a year. And if you, if you're going to do weekly trainings, split up those 52 weeks, give people an assignment, say, Hey, teach us what you do and, and have that as a training. Cause it's, it's a nice little refresher. Um, and so is Amani the one that's in charge of, of the training or do you, they split up between her and Adela? They, well, we, we, uh, mainly it's Amani and Adela. Yeah. If for lawyers, it's Amani and for Adela, it's the paralegals. But the, the cool thing too, is that now we have paralegals who've developed a little expertises on certain things at immigration. And so they've actually led the training too on what they've learned. It's awesome. So, I mean, that's cool. I mean, and you know, it is whenever you're teaching something, you know, what he, that much more, I mean, you, you cause it's, it takes a, an, an advanced level of understanding. And so having your people, teach these things is just going to uh, better them as well. It's going to make them even better at their jobs. Yep. All right, man. We're ready to wrap. I'm ready. All right. I want to remind everyone to go to the Facebook group, which does have about 4,500 members. I've not looked recently, but it's, it's definitely grown quite a bit and get involved in the discussion there. If you want more of a, I'd say even high level discussion, join us in the guild, maxlawguild.com, which I'll throw this out there. You will get the training course for free if you join the guild, which is kind of a cool little uh, bonus. Um, so once, when we launch it in January, you'll get that for free, which I know people in the guild are seem to be pretty excited about that. We had a nice little discussion last week about it in the guild. And then if you don't mind, we do offer this for free, um, like, like most other podcasts. So if you don't mind giving us a five-star review, it'll help us spread the love. We appreciate it. Jimmy, what's your hack of the week? So on my walk today, I was finishing up the audio version read by Dan Kennedy of the new Psycho Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz and Dan Kennedy. It's fun to listen to because it's got all this really weird 80s music, like like an old training thing. Like if if we ever do an audio version of our training, I want to hire Ismail or somebody else to make us that 80s type music because it's just so much fun. And it's dated for sure. And it's a little woo-woo but there's a lot of stuff in there that I really like. And it gave me my idea for my hack of the week. So in order to pull off this hack, you're going to need three things. You're going to need a piece of paper, a pen and a match, because what you're going to do here, I don't know when this episode is going to drop exactly sometime around the end of the year, you're going to write down on a list of paper, everything that you're angry about, everyone that you resent, everyone who bothers you, everyone who pisses you off. It could be you, the things that you're mad at yourself about. I'm going to need a really big piece of paper, Jimmy. Well, here's the the extra hack. You can use the other side too. Ooh, nice. Yep. Ooh, this hack. So you're going to write down within one hour of listening to this podcast, you're going to write down everything and everybody that you're angry about. And then you're going to find a quiet moment sometime by yourself. And you're going to go outside unless you're in Southern California and you're going to light this on fire and burn it and just let it go just to sort of clear the air, get ready for 2021 to let go of any lingering resentments and to just be focused on the future. And I love that one so much. I, I think I've told you this story before. Actually, I'll tell the story in a second. Whenever you were talking about the 1980s, the eighties stuff, eighties uh, music, I was thinking about wonder woman, 1984 and like how many cliches they've got in there when it comes. It's so funny. I, I, was, I think that they should win an award on set design. It is, it is really cool. So I'm not going to say much more than that, but no. So whenever I was, um, I mean, I was probably a couple years out but I had hired uh, a couple interns and that intern then later was um, when she became a lawyer, she um, was interviewing for this guy and this guy, she listed our firm on the, on her resume. The attorney said, Oh no, Tyson music. He's the one that's uh, got more confidence than experience or something like that. Like a total and this guy is a total, he's a total jealous POS, right? Let's go beat him up. Yeah, he's not a very successful lawyer. Okay, I'll just say that. You'll tell me who it is later, right? Yeah. Um, honestly, I know who he is. I just can't remember his name, but I'll remember his name. I'll tell you. But um, okay. so I wrote him a letter and I actually invited him to coffee, but I was actually in my, it was a card and I basically called him out for talking shit. And then I mean, it was not very nice in my letter, but then I said, you know, if you want to get to know me better and actually know who I am, I'll take you to coffee. And I put it in my, and I put a stamp on it. I addressed it to him and I put it in my briefcase and I let it sit there for a few days. And I finally was like, you know what? This is not worth it. Just not worth it. So I threw it, I threw it away. Part of me wishes I could have sent it, 
but it's just such a like such a anyways such a dick move but um but i so i like it i i like the idea of writing that stuff down and just getting rid of letting it go you know it it it, it doesn't it doesn't make any difference it's if I had sent that letter, it, it would just pissed him off and I would have seen him in court and it probably wouldn't have been good. So I like that. It's a good one, Jimmy. All right. So my tip of the week is it's way different than yours. Um, so I was texting with Brooks Derrick a few weeks ago and Brooks sent me this. He had responded. We were talking, basically, you know how you're having like multiple conversations in a text. And so you're talking about multiple things. All of a sudden I see this little line with this little, um, with, like responding to one of my text messages above. And I'm like, what the hell? How'd you do that? So if you want to reply to a specific message on an iPhone, you hold down that message and it gives you a reply option. And then you can re- reply specifically to that text, which I think is so freaking awesome because I can't tell you how many times I've have, been having a text conversation and then they, they're they confused about what I'm saying because I'm responding to a previous text, but we're talking about another conversation and it draws a little line and connects the dots for you. So if you use an iPhone, if you want to reply to a specific message, just press and hold, it'll give you the reply option and boom, you can reply to it. It's pretty you awesome. You did that to me the other day. I was like, what the hell is this? Isn't it pretty cool? Yeah. You're like, and so the people... And, I'd say 99% of people don't know about it. It is such a useful little tool and it's just a simple little uh, thing. So that's cool. Awesome. All right, man. Well, it's been fun. Have a good weekend. I'm off to San Diego. See you, bro. Oh yeah. Have a good vacation. We'll see you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. To stay in contact with your hosts and to access more content, content. go to MaximumLawyer.com. Have a great week and catch you next time.